everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 88 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, uh, where today I'm kind of just tweaking and getting ready to, to get this whole system fully finalized, uh, is what I'm really looking to accomplish. So, um, last episode we set up some fans in here that push any entities, boom, zoop, right into the spot. And then we set up a floating medimoon, medimoon, from uh, Batania that should, in theory, prevent mobs from moving around. Uh, so we're going to experiment with that a little bit. I did place down the mana pool. I found when I logged in today, after having, like, closed the world and come back in, this thing was out of mana. So I don't know what the deal with his mana thing is. It was a little bit weird last episode, so we're going to play with that a little bit today. I've also prepared ahead of time some mechanical dirt, ready to kind of get this stuff going. And that's kind of the reason I set up the redstone control, because I wanted to make sure that we were kind of good to go here with this, right? So let's get the mechanical dirt ready to rock. I guess what we'll do is set up a nice little basement under here. Yeah, look at that. How nice. And we should be good to go. Now, what we're totally going to want is to make sure that this stuff is ready to do its thing. So, is this redstone controllable now? I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work out, but we're going to play and see what we can come up with. Right? So, you that redstone mode run with redstone signal. That's definitely what we want. Now, did that change it for all of them? It didn't. It didn't. So I'd have to go to each one of these individually and click the button. Because that, that seems tedious. I wish that they would connect, but I guess that they are individual blocks. So I guess they don't. Because we definitely only want this stuff running when there's a redstone signal. Because this is very much going to be turned off most of the time and turned on occasionally. Um, now, I think the fluid does go across the board, doesn't it? The fluid does spread adjacently. So that's nice, at least. It does treat it as one big fluid and um, energy tank. You know, So we don't have to worry too much about connecting power and fluid to each of these blocks. So I should be able to just pop you here, boop, and hit that, and he should fill up liquid meat here. Yes. And everybody else seems to be getting liquid meat. I guess the one that it's connected to fills up the fastest, and then it, what it's probably doing is putting some in here, and then this is putting some in here, and then this one's putting some in here, and it's kind of propagating across all the other mechanical dirts, which is cool. Cool-ish. Uh, I'm actually not 100% sure that I like that being there, because I'm probably going to want to redstone control all of this from underneath. So if I put this here, would that be noticeable? I'm thinking no. Boop. Will that work? Ish. Whoop. Nice. That's cool. All right. Yeah, I like that. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to need a way to get out of here. That's my portal frame. Yeah, we don't want to go into that guy, do we? So let's maybe cover some of this stuff up. Yeah, that's not so bad. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, I like that. Nice. All right, putting away some of the junk we've accumulated. We've got a few things here that I need to organize, but yeah, we'll get there. I don't think I need half this stuff at this point. I don't think I need this portal configurator no more. All right, nice. All right, so that looks pretty solid. I like the looks of that bit. Um, let's do something with redstone control here. Uh, I'm thinking we might want to go the route uh, like we have in the past. So I think I've got my flux point ready to go. Boop, boop, and boop. That'll get power into everybody. Nice. And everybody should be sharing power now too, just like they share liquid meat. So it's not super fast. I'm, I'm guessing the, the, the tile entities are like probably programmed to say, is the adjacent tile entity a mechanical dirt? If so, give it some meat, give it some power. So it's not great, not terrible. Um, let's check 
how the lever behaves here. Now, it might be also that I've got too many of these liquid. Like, I might just have too much going on here, but like, if I give you a redstone signal, are you gonna run? Yes, are you guys running? See, nothing else is running. So that's good to know. So what I should probably do is whatever I do, I should make it. Now, will that not let a mob spawn there because there's a lever there? That might be the case, actually. There's a block in the space that the mob would spawn in. Um, yeah, that could be true. Let's do something like you. That would probably be this one moving then? Yeah, that's cool. All right, so that in theory should make mobs spawn. Maybe. Does mechanical dirt require darkness? I forget. I feel like it didn't, right? I feel like it didn't. I feel like it doesn't technically require darkness. Maybe I should turn on another one. Let's do the center one. How's that sound? So that should be this guy running now. Okay. And you've got liquid meat in you. You should be working. Here I was thinking, like, this would run too fast. <laughs> and it's just not. Uh, part of me wants to put the rats down there, but I don't think that that'll work with the whole fan thing. Ah, uh, you know. I'm just saying. Are you gonna spawn something or what? Liquid? Like, come on, mechanical dirt. Let's go. You're slow. This was more like this was more meant to be a like a quick test, but now I'm thinking what I should probably do is get, you know, all the things turned on. So let's get um, Xnet-y things going. Because I think still Xnet is probably your best bet. Ooh, I need a lot of red dye, don't I? Missing 108. Oof, that's rough. Luckily I've got... I mean, I do also have beet, don't I? Beets. Yeah, I've got 1.3k beets. Maybe I should just teach you that red dye. Do you have a red dye recipe? You do not. Okay, what can I do with red dye? Those things are a thing. I don't see much with beets, though. I want to find, like, a beets make a lot kind of deal. Not even milling has a beet recipe. I'm not crazy, right? Beets can totally make red dye. They can. All right, well, I guess it's just one-to-one, -one, huh? I was hoping there was, like, a one-to-four type recipe going on, but... No such luck. All right, now... Xnet, give me your 30 or so of these. I will take a controller. I will take those 30. And the cables... And we'll probably turn on a handful of these. I don't know that I want to turn all of them on, but we'll figure it out. Okay. So let's come down here. I'll remove this dude. You guys are going to be... Connected up. I really love the wireframe model on these, by the way. That looks so cool. You know, call me a nerd, but I think it looks neat. Okay. I don't need this to be like too fancy here. All right, you need a connector. Okay. So that's all those things. I think there's like a simple way to copy paste these two. Uh, I'm going to remove whatever this is, this channel. I'm going to kill it. Yeah, really. And we're going to add an Xnet logic. Cool. Uh, and I'm not sure what I want to do here, but I'm thinking I probably... Oh, look, something actually spawned. Good job. 
Is somebody running, actually? I don't even know. How did something spawn there? I mean, he looks like he's doing a good job of standing still, so that's... That's nice, at least. I don't know how he spawned, though, because nothing should be running at this point. But whatever. Um, so how do I want to set up the, the lever to turn this thing on? I feel like I should do that now, right? Um, I feel like the lever should be, like, back here. So maybe this block could be where the lever goes. I like that. Now there was a proxy, isn't that what we want? And uh, a redstone proxy. And I think I can facade that, can't I? I wanna make this look nice, remember. Let's put away that guy. Yeah, well, I'll play with it and see what I can come up with. Oh, hello. How are you spawning in there? Is this like just... No, it shouldn't be regular vanilla Minecraft spawning. Is anybody running? It's behaving-ish, except that it shouldn't be running. I thought everybody... Oh, this. Is it that one? You think it's that one? The, the lever? Yeah. That we're going to have to add as a different control mechanism. I thought they wouldn't be able to spawn on that because reasons, right? There's a, there's a block there, but maybe... Just checking all these now to make sure I didn't leave one as always running. But it doesn't look like I did. Ah. It wouldn't be just vanilla Minecraft spawning mechanics because we're blocking that. So it's definitely not something that simple. Ah. Nope. Gotta go a little bit deeper behind the walls there. Let's make sure it's well lit for you YouTube viewers, which is everyone. And then what do I do? Just connect this or no? Yeah, I think that's... I would love it if I could do something a little bit fancier, but meh. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm using the redstone proxy wrong. I'm not sure. Okay, cool. So then here we're gonna say the redstone proxy. Sensor mode. RS. Greater than zero, output on white. And then for these guys, you're going to be an output if white, emit signal 15. Now I copy this connector to the clipboard. Paste. Oh yeah, that's what's up. Paste. So let's test this. That would be this one, right? So if I flip this lever on, some of these should be running. Yes. Yes. Cool. Three of them are running. Look at that. Okay, that's awesome. Now if I flip this lever off, they should no longer be running. Beautiful. Beautiful. I know. I know, dude, there's a hmm out there. All right, I get it. I really do, Mr. Invisible Wandering Villager guy. Okay, enough, enough. Enough with the hmm. What else can I put away at this moment? Eh, nothing. I need most of this junk. I don't think I need any more mechanical dirt, at least, or my Batania book. That'll do. But of course, what I do need now is dirt to cover up that hole I just made. Because again, we're trying to be sneaky here. I don't want anybody to know that this area even exists. Okay. So now we'll come down here, we will copy and paste the rest of these settings, right? So paste it in. That's cool. I like that copy-paste settings thing, that's really neat. That's handy when you have to do 25 of these things. Oh, I have to give uh, RF to my controller, don't let me forget that. I've got an extra flux plug on me to handle that. I just noticed my RF was low, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be doing that.
and done. Sweet. Now for you, sir. Nice. Okay. So now let's see what happens when I activate signal. They should all be running. And of course none of them are. Why wouldn't you run right now? That's the perfect that we tested this already. You should all be behaving. What in the world is happening? Oh well, wait. These three are going, but the rest of them aren't? Huh? How is that even possible? Oh, you're a 15, but when I pasted these guys, they didn't become 15s? Oh, that's a bummer. Well, there's your problem. So what I should do right now is turn you off before you start spawning a ton of mobs. <laughs> and uh, set all these guys to 15 down the line. I'll be back in a sec when I do. All right, now they should all be behaving. I guess that copy-paste mechanic doesn't copy the number across. I don't know if that's a bug or not. McJD, if you're watching, I'm sorry if I forgot to tell you. Oh boy, hold on. Things are happening. Aha, nice. Nice. All right, well that's the wrong sword. Well, that's pretty awesome, right? How did you... Okay, that's better. What I should probably do is have some kind of... block thing going on there. Yeah, I like that plan. That's looking pretty good, right? That ain't bad. Alright, make with the mob spawning. Come on. You should be going faster than that. There's 25 of you in there. Let's go. Now, the other thing I should do is some kind of mob drop item collection thingy because there's going to be a lot of mob drops here that we're going to have to deal with. Right? A lot of mob drops that we clearly need to deal with. And then we can turn you off with that. And that's... That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's not as fast as I would like you to be. Um, and also I need to turn that on with the proper thing. Um, so what I should probably do... Is not have you... Tied to this. I should have this lever here. Is that accessible? Yes, it is. Nice. <laughs> cool. I love it. That works pretty well. All right. And then you should not be triggering. Good. So we should have no mob spawning now. We flip the lever. We'll get mob spawns happening. Can I put those speed upgrades in this thing? Because that would be cool if I can. That might help, help a little bit. Okay, good times. And that was just a test of the do creepers hurt things. Because we've got, you know, explosion protection on with FTB chunks, we don't have to worry too much about that. And that's pretty cool. Not a concern. Beautiful. Now, do you accept these speed upgrades you kind of do you kind of do so if if mob spawning is not fast enough i could totally yeah that's a lot quicker isn't it interesting how the power is being wonky wonder if that's going to be a problem shouldn't be but I'm also, it just seems really slow, doesn't it? Five five mechanical block, mechanical dirt blocks, and they're all, none of them running? Seems seems a little slow. And how come one, some of them are at like 50 and some of them are at 100? I don't know, I don't know what's happening now. Where are all the mobs at? Spawn some mobs. Hello, there you go. Sweet, I think we got a rat. That's cool. Nice. All right. So, I mean, proof of concept, it works, right? We should do something for mob drop collection things next. So let's get an ender chest. And what do we do for ranged collectors? What's one that we've used in the past? Over here. Were you fast enough? Oh, I did this thing. 
Yeah, that's one way we could do it for item collection. Um, there's also... I want it to be, like, super fast. I don't know how quick you're going to be. I want to make sure that it never goes into my inventory. That's effectively what I'm looking to accomplish. I want it to never go in my inventory. Okay. So if we were to have this guy here and this guy here... Come on, Chief. Aha! Take that, bounding box. Uh, so range is... 5x5x5, five by five by five, empty blacklist. Maybe 7x7x7? Seven by seven by seven? We'll see. So now... And my, my, my question is, will that pick up fast enough such that, do I like not have cobblestone in here or something? Like why am I occasionally getting cobblestone in my inventory anymore? Will that be fast enough such that it will pick up the items so quick I never get them? That's my goal. There's probably a collector in this pack that works that quickly. We'll find out. Yes, hello friends. I feel like that's it. I feel like that was pretty, that was pretty awesome, right? Like the item drops are just instant, instant pickup. So my only complaint is that you're not quite fast enough with the mob spawning. You're good, but you're not great. So I might, I might make some add-ons like the speed upgrade dudes, uh, and see if I distribute like you know twenty-five speed upgrades in here. Though maybe, oh, we'll see. It's hard because I want to put twenty-five in, and so I like I have to make a bunch of them before I decide if they were worth it or not. I mean, it can't hurt, so. All right, so as one more protection, now that I've actually got the mana pool here, feeding the Medium Moon, I want to kind of watch these zombie dudes and make sure that they never actually escape. I'm just curious, because remember last episode we were toying with this a little bit? Yeah, I definitely need to make some add-ons. Can I make, like, add-on speed tier two? Missing glass panes? You don't know how to make glass panes? Come on, Direwolf. How's that even possible that you don't know how to make glass panes? I guess you don't know how to make glass panes. The crazy things that happen. Add on speed tier two. We'll make 25 of those. Shouldn't be too bad. Maybe we'll make the uh, efficiency ones as well. This should both be as fast as they can be, right? I mean, that's not that expensive. We've obviously got the resources for it. Maybe I'll speed this process up a little bit just because I'm impatient at this point. Yeah, so you're doing that? No, no. We got, we got a little help for you guys. Boom. That's how we do it. Look, look, <laughs> he can't even keep up. Now we're cooking. That's how we do it. Oh no, they don't stack. That's the worst thing ever. You're kidding me. Oh no, they don't stack. Why don't you stack? Speed add-ons. Why don't you stack? All right, so that's gonna be our test bed. I might have to populate the rest of those off camera, but that should be running a lot quicker now, right? Comparatively to that, these guys should be cooking. So if I made all those that fast, I think we'd be cool. So real quick test here, I know. Ugh, I wasn't supposed to have a creeper for that. Uh, real quick test here is if I can get one or two mobs to show up that aren't creepers, I'd like to see how long they get stuck in position. Because remember last stream or last episode we were messing with this, it wasn't really being powered properly, so I think the Medium Moon was being weird. Okay, so yeah, keep shooting me, buddy. 
Are you ever going to break free? Ideally, the answer is no. I think as long as he's mana powered, he looks like he's really doing a good job. Yeah, he is well, well, well locked in position. Perfect. And no mob drops. Love it. Perfect. Very pleased with this build. Very happy with this. I think it looks awesome. Because I, I just think it's cool, right? Because now we're going to be able to put this here. Um, and and I think that's I think that's way cooler than your traditional like put blocks around it kind of thing to prevent the mobs from getting out. Like I always hated I always hated the idea of having like a space above the altar where blocks would like or mobs would fall down and be like in a block trap. Kind of, I, I just think this looks cooler, right? I think it's a neat way to do it. it. It's different. It's different, right? There's nothing wrong with that way, but it's different, and I like it. All right, so we've got the that thing spawning. We got this. So let's get back to making more runes. So I think another important task here will be to automate the blood altar. I think that would be cool. What I'd like to do is do it in an intelligible way. I'd like to make sure that the blood altar can recognize if there's enough LP in the altar before it tries to insert an item. Before it tries to insert an item. So my question is, if we were gonna use modular routers, does it have that kind of if then functionality? Can we detect the fluid level? Is there any way to detect with modular routers? Um, what the fluid level is. Because if not, we might want to use a different approach. Um, modules. Modules. Detector module. Yeah. That detects items. This guy can transfer fluids, kinda. I would love it if I could say, cause what we wanna do, we wanna, basically what we wanna say, we don't wanna put items into this guy unless he has enough LP in him. Now I think we can use a comparator to detect how much is in there, yes. I don't know if that's implemented yet. It may not be implemented yet. So apparently not. Apparently not. Um, doesn't RF tools have a fluid or a liquid guy? Detector. So we've got player detector. We've got mob detectors. We've got those things, or a detector, detector module, which we already looked at. I could maybe do it with refined storage, but I don't love the way that looks or feels. I have an idea in my head of what might work. Let's just look through fluid. So we got like a bunch of tanks and stuff. I'm not seeing a lot here. Fluid router. Uh, fluid collector, fluid placer. I'm not seeing much by way of fluid detector. Like I'd like to measure the amount of fluid in a tank and do something with that. Fluid encapsulator, fluid cell frame. Not seeing much, right? Surprisingly, no. Surprisingly, no. So I'm thinking integrated dynamics is where I was going with this. Maybe we could like fully automate the blood altar with integrated dynamics. Does that sound cool? I wonder if that would be a fun way to do things. I don't think I've ever done it that way before, but we could use integrated dynamics to do detect the amount of fluid in here, detect how many items are in the in the output chest, transfer from one to the other to get to our target number of slates and all that. 
That might be doable. It might be a little complicated, but it might be doable. That might be your best approach with our current mod selection. Because I'm not seeing much that can measure liquid or fluid levels and output a signal based on it, right? Um, that's what I'd like to see, is like how much is in here. One way you could do that a little bit more simply, if you wanted to just measure a you know, redstone signal, you could use refined storage. You could like attach an external storage to the tank and it should measure it. But remember, blood alters have multiple tanks, so that might be tricky. So maybe we should use integrated dynamics. That sounds like fun. I feel like integrated dynamics might be the way to go here. Yeah, I like that idea. I like that idea. Let's let's do that. So what I'm going to need is some mineral saplings, right? So step one, we need to find mineral saplings. And I don't know if it retrogens. I'm assuming it doesn't, right? So we're going to need to go somewhere new, somewhere new to find mineral. And in fairness, there's not a lot of new places. But if I went due north of this direction, I could probably run into some new terrain gen. And we're going to want to find a mineral tree, right? Well, you know what I should really bring with me? An axe. That would be smart. That would be super smart. If I'm going to look for trees, I should do that. Unbreaking three. Do I have anything better? Not really. It's fine then. I might have one in my in my bag thing, but in the quantum bag, we'll find out. So let's go find a mineral tree. We'll chop it down, and then we'll get started with integrated dynamics. Because I think that might be your all-in-one mod solution for handling it. I kind of wanted to go modular routers because I think I could hide all the modular router bits under the floor. Uh, alas. I don't think it can do the redstone. Like, I don't think it can get, detect the fluid is the problem with modular routers. I don't think it can say, like, only transfer this if there's, you know, two buckets worth of fluid in here. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. I'll, maybe I'll use some combination of the two. So, like, integrated dynamics to read the fluid level. And then, oh, wow, is this a mushroom biome? Look at that. Mushroom fields biome. That's cool. Where are all my mushrooms at? Hey, buddies. That's neat. Look, there's a mushroom biome. This may be like the first time ever in my entire life that I've actually run into a mushroom biome during a Let's Play series. Like legit found one. That's kind of cool, right? That's kind of cool. Not exactly what I was looking for, but I'll take it. So I have to decide what I want to do. I could either just measure the fluid tank level and emit a redstone signal, or I could use integrated dynamics to do all the things. One or the other. We'll figure it out. Let me stop flying over water here on camera and we'll be right back when I find what I want. Check it out. There's two water temples right next to each other here. <laughs> Found one. Mineral saplings for the win. Menglin discovery. Hooray. So this is integrated dynamics introduction. Uh, we will obviously we're at the end of the episode here. So we'll we'll cover this more in depth uh, next episode. But this is a very extremely ridiculously powerful way to automate literally all the things. Um, if you ever don't know how to automate something, integrated dynamics is probably the answer. Um, as a result, it's also very, I mean, I don't want to say very complicated, but it's complicated, right? It's not a very simple mod to use because it doesn't only do simple things, right? You can totally do some really complex stuff with this mod. Um, so it's 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 like a good catch-all solution to being able to, you know, literally if you if you're like I can't think of a good way to automate this, you could probably do it with with integrated dynamics. Really, what it comes down to. Um, so let me put. I definitely want to make sure I get a sapling here. Would be nice. Oh, good, I got two. Perfect. Then I am good. As long as we have saplings, we're cool. And I'll tell you why. Because I can come over here. I can take said sapling. I can mm, you, and I can do mm, you. And, aw, oh, it takes two minutes? It's adorable, because I got some rats that have to disagree with that. Boop. Now we're cooking. Hello, mineral saplings. And that's going to get us, you know, not only mineral saplings, but, like, wood and sticks and everything, too. So, I'm going to let that run for a little bit. We'll come back next episode. We'll get started with integrated dynamics. And in the meantime, I'm going to see if there's a simpler way for me to do this, because I definitely want to play with integrated dynamics in the series. But if I can find a simpler way to accomplish what I want to, I will. 
Uh, so we'll come back next time and probably do it at Rated Dynamics. Maybe not. We'll find out. For now, Donald 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. For now, take it easy.